Um, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, Rowley, it isn't true, is it? What that lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. I had a dream, a terrible dream. All the things I did that night, everything come out, everything exposed. Only, it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. Good, good golly! <laughs> oh god. Oh da! Oh da! Oh no, no, this is the meaning of all this. Oh, Rowley, why? Why would you do something like that? Removing a corpse is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing the victim dead should be one too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I... I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the Yard's reputation. For... for everything. I have a possible explanation. Ugh. For why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime? I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You a foreigner presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman? Uh, yeah, Lord Ramsey, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. <sighs> I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. Evidence? Uh-oh. Wh wh what England, Japan. It makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are all the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for Constable Beat's unthinkable actions? What gives away? What? The, un the anniversary bouquet? That's the only one that would make sense, right? If indeed his motive was to not cancel the anniversary dinner with Patricia. Take that! I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I have only just arrived from Japan, which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that, though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways, there's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special how? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh yes, it was our very first wedding anniversary. <sighs> Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife, and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebra celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, what must have gone through the man's mind? But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat puts up with the lot being married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. So it's not the okay. It's it's not the um, fear of her wrath that he's sincerely he sincerely wanted to have a dinner with his wife. 
<sighs> this is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to lend, me, lend to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says... When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Uh -huh. Constable Beat. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's alright. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh! Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious, Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? It was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could be still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why tonight, of all nights? Why? It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so... I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Mersham Street and then... Oh, Susato-san. I'm... I'm... I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! He's just a kid! Oh, Constable... I... I just wanted... I just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner! Oh, Rowley! Just that one night! You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring Beats Care. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. Uh, I beg your pardon? <laughs> Oh, oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rony would never have left this poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. Ah, I see your meaning now. But God, God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Rony, that was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rony. And can you tell us, Constable, how many books did you move from one side of the road to the other in total? Huh? Oh, um, four it was. Yes, sir, definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Gary Depp household, of course. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered half around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. 
how you found it. What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, and the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, the lion's pride, that the victim was holding? Oh yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. It was in the victim's hand when Mrs. Beat first ran over to see what had happened. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you, know, you see. And there were only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I, I didn't think moving it all over the road would make a jar of difference. I, I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord... Yes, Lord Vazix? I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, sir, what will become of my Roly? What will happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my lover. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Carve that lesson in your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Uh, never again, sir? You, you mean to say... Leave. Now, this trial is not over yet. Uh, um... Sir! Oh, I feel so bad for him. Whoa, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally... That the accused, Mr. Suzuki Natsume, is the only person who could have possibly committed this crime. Objection! No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there's someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. Lord Ron Zeeks, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will, and if further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. You will name this other person who could have perpetrated this crime. That would be Joanne, right? I mean... She just threw a knife out of the window in a rage, and this, this surely this can be considered an accident. Take that! The defense would once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again? My assistant made the same request earlier, in order to finally reveal the truth about this case. It's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joanne Garadab. Me? Me? Oh dearie me! Objection! That request has already been denied. Objection! But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadab, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband. 
In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down. Finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadab. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Oh! I don't recall it. <laughs> Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there in all that regalia said the members of the jury needn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. OBJECTION! No, I have no recollection of seeing that at all. Juror number four? Oh! Make no mistake, you jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but that's as common old garden knife. Uh, it could have come from anywhere. Uh, we have several like that at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying, please, Mrs. Goda? No, listen to me. I, I refuse to believe through all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought of that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence. Are you going to insist on this being my fault? Hmm. Then you're going to have to prove to me that I threw that knife, if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop. Do your worst. Uh, well... Well, Mr. Naruto, if, if I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Take the stand, Jura. Oh? The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. I... I'm going to have to testify? Jura number four? As I'm sure you will appreciate having observed it with your own eyes today, a witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed, truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh, dearie me! So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadab. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Certainly, my lord. Oh, uh... That's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Yes, Van Zeeks is on our side. On the side of the truth. This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the Old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer. Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Joanne Garidab, and I'm, um, well, I'm a juror and such like. It sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid or what anymore. <laughs> The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Uh, yes, yes, my lord. You would tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, oh dear me. Turn up, Joanny. Nothing to worry about now.
Ah. Oh, I didn't know you were here, John. Ah. Wasn't only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? I rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But what would a boy do about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that, hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John! <laughs> I presume you are Mr. John Gerardup? Yes, sir. Former second lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th North Northumberland Facilier, sir. See my fair share of action and now living the quiet life, as it were. Oh, he's wearing the medal. The quiet life when you're not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question. Oh, uh, well, yes, yeah, sir. Haha, <laughs> quiet. I believe this may represent the first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. Yes, on the day you were referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't record the reason now. Knocked a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Soon headed out though and got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I'd notice if one or two went missing, I'm afraid. And if that wally thing in the victim's bag really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it, I think. Uh oh. That is very little to go on. Hmm. It sounds as though it was quite a battlefield in your household that evening. Although an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. Are you calling your wife the enemy? Are the streets okay? Of course, a veteran such as myself is only too aware that on every battlefield you just a gnat whisk up on death at any moment. Are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well, I must say I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus never such as such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have already testified. This may be a dead end. But Zeke's may well be right. Well, whatever the chances, we only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Narodo. Yes, I'm afraid so. Very well, Counsel. Begin your cross-examination. Call the reason now. <laughs> Wasn't the reason like a love letter hidden inside one of the books? Soon headed out and got the window open. Meanwhile, you were picking up whatever you could find. Okay, let's ask Joanne here. Hold it! Even though the room was on fire... As, as far as I con was concerned at the time... It was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw. How do you speak while drinking tea? That is most certainly not true, Officer Sato Takedown, Mr. Narahodo. How did she know I was thinking that? <laughs> she can read my mind. So please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? In all honesty, I don't recall, but I feel I must point out that I'm no monster. Let me see, some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge, a uh, napkin... Jupiter! Uh, 
napkin? Wait, let, 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 let's hear her till the end. It was really only soft item that was throwing. Oh. She's finished, I think. So let's pursue. Excuse me! Do you have something to add, sir? Oh, nice spin. Pipe spin. Mr. Garadab. <coughs> Don't shoot. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? Uh, nothing of any significance, no. Uh, just the barrage of projectiles the old thing launched in my direction. It was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker, I seem to recall. The, the fire poker? Holy crap, that's an illegal item in Hitman. <laughs> Ouch. And a woman's aim is uncanny. She landed in the red Ah! Good grief, woman! We are not at home now! This is a court of law and that's not no tea po tea, like a uh, cup. That's no cup for tea. That's my pipe. Oh dear, be ever so sorry, dear. What's she even doing with a teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would never have sold such things, obviously. Well, take a look at this then. How do you suppose that happened, hmm? Your, your pipe, sir? I have this thing in my hand, as usual, at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of the soft projectiles she did, yes. And when I went to pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. I see, your pipe was broken. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. Uh, you are one who accelerate, aren't you, dear? Hmm, I wonder what we should make of this account. Uh, of course it's important. What? The defense believes Mr. Garadab's remarks just now to be of great significance. Objection! Oh, what now, Van Zeeks? This war veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes, as well as hearts, may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to the formal testimony. Indeed, common sense, one might say. Okay, might one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Mm, well, I, I don't see why not. Oh dear with me, there you go again trying to ingratiate yourself with a young lady. Oh my... Oh, Joanne. Very well, the court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. I hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Navarudo. I, I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned down. Oh no, it's fine. Thanks to Suzette's son, we have some new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. <gasps> what the? Oh my god. <laughs> it's the tip of the knife. What a coincidence. It looks like he is in a sorry state with that bandage around it, doesn't it? But for some reason it feels slightly ominous to me, like it's trying to shout out a warning. Probably because it's the same blue as Mr. Gary Depp's dressing gown. I suppose it must have considerable sentimental value to Mr. Gary Depp, given that he's gone to the trouble of repairing it like this. Either that or he can't afford to replace it. There's a th thing missing on the pipe. There's a small nick out of the bowl here, look. It appears to have been made relatively recently. And see how there are little scraps and scrapes and dents all over it? It's clearly a well-loved pipe. Yes, you're right. It seems to me recently that being well-loved goes hand in hand with getting some battle scars. This particular nick is catching my eye though, because it's clearly new. Oh, 
something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe here. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What's this? It's a tiny fragment of metal. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Surely it could be... Oh yes, it, it sure could be. Well, thank you for that, rebuttal, Mr. Gary Depp. Now, if we could return to the crux of the matter... Wait, let me investigate the tip as well. Can I? I can. This is the tiny piece of metal we found in the chamber of Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. It... looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Suspicious. Is something wrong, Mr. Nanohoto? I... I don't really know. There's just something niggling me, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Perhaps in that case, it would be wise to examine some of the other pieces of evidence. Okay, thanks, game. Yeah, it has to be the tip of this blade. Oh, look here, Mr. Nanhodo, just at the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. Wait, part of it's missing? I could be wrong, but I've just got a feeling. Do you remember this? Ah, that's... That's a tiny fragment of metal that we found inside Mr. Garadab's pipe. Yes, and just maybe... Oh my! It's a perfect fit! Somehow I just knew it. Okay, we've... Confirmed it. It's a perfect fit. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? Mm -hmm. If that body thing really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it, I think. Yeah, we 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 do have proof. Here's the proof. Fragment of metal. Objection! Mr. Gary Depp, could I ask you to take a good look at this, please? You can ask, but I can't see a bally thing. You can't? You used to call me Dead Eye Depp back in the regiment, of course. But that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. Oh, he does. Dear me, it's rather wearing, wearing being asked about every other letter in every other word. You must uh, D very d d. What? What? You must be very busy, dizzy. What? What is that? A tiny scrap of metal. Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in a chamber of Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. My pipe, you say? My job! I wonder how that got there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that it is in some way related to the matter of the stabbing on Briar Road? Ouch. Why did I do that? I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record, I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of this case, my lord. You appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, Council. Very well then, present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, when paired, allegedly reveals the truth? Well, the knife, right? The knife. Take that! This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece of the tip of the blade that is missing. 
a common issue with the inferior blades sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in their victims' bones. Oh, wow. And what of this particular knife? No doubt its tip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection! No, that's not the case. Huh? The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in a chamber of Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. Oh, ah. Good grief, Lord von Zeeks, are you okay? I, I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Good, good party, gosh! Oh, that's a new one. 